Hi everyone, I'm George Cow, and today I'm here with Esther Lemons. She's a visual brand consultant and she is a member of my Master Heart client group coaching program. Esther, it's so great to have you here. Thanks, George. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. So Esther is going to be sharing some of the lessons she's learned in the journey of her business. And I think it'll be helpful for all of you who are uh, consultants, coaches, service providers as well. So before I we get started officially, I wanted to um, read out her bio so that you all have some uh, context of what kind of work Esther does. So here we go. So Esther Lemons is a visual brand consultant with 20 years of experience in graphic design and creative artworking, which is the technical uh, and detailed process of preparing documents for print. Esther has found that uh, her true skills and passion are in the brand application and implementation, which Esther, I'm going to add, ask you about and what that means working with entrepreneurs and business owners who care about consistency and excellence in their visual presentation, helping them get the best out of their brand online and offline. And her website is uh, zestybranding.co.uk. And I'll put a link to that in the notes of this video. And Esther, I'm going to have you probably share some branding tips, which, you know, sure. gosh, uh, most people watching this are, or working to build some business or share their message. So I'm sure we have barely enough time to get into anything around that, but we'll, we'll do our best here. But I, I always want to just start with your own uh, lessons from growing your own business. And we were, uh, you sent me a few notes about this um, beforehand. And one mm -hmm. of the things you mentioned is uh, that you had to learn to slow down in order to speed up and maybe you can talk about what what that means for you yeah of course um i've got my notes sort of on the side here on my screen as well yeah um i think well for years i i mean i know my my stuff like my skills and my my field you know design and branding um but building an online business that's a whole different story really and the way i go about that because i do sort of um, work as you know consult not consulting contracting um, so contracting is what I've been doing for a long time working in local agencies um, and having my own clients as well and doing design and branding work for them but translating that into an online business and repackaging it as such that's that's a whole different ball game really so um, I think for years I was just doing 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 lots of you know consuming every course I could find uh, just you know 24 7 really just all the time learning stuff researching things and I think I just pretty much exhausted myself and um, but I found a lot of this the information out there is very um, you know there's like a blueprint for this and a system for that and it, it I don't know just none of it really resonated with me and and the advice you get and I just couldn't bring myself it just didn't feel right and it just didn't feel aligned and I was really resistant to it and I think when I started finding more authentic marketing like what you do that's when I realized this is why that stuff is not resonating with me because it's all about selling and about you know yourself rather than other people you know it's about um, you know getting the money in and getting the clients and getting the numbers rather than thinking what can I do for someone how can I serve people how can I help them so um, that's why I found that the stuff that you teach is kind of like a breath of fresh air, really. There's not a lot of it out there as far as I've found yet. Um, but I think more and more people are catching on now, which is re really good. Um, and that's just been really, really helpful to me. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yes, this idea of um, taking the focus away from the numbers to the people is a paradigm shift. You know, mm. because it is so different from what we usually hear out there. So much of marketing uh, is really coming from like corporate, the corporate world in terms of originally that, you know, our bigger businesses where it is, they're, they're trying to get, they need to get tens of thousands of customers to make something work, right? But yeah. when it comes to us solopreneurs, we can't, you know, serve tens of thousands of clients. That's we can right. serve a few clients at a time, serve them well. And so mm. it is about, so talk about that. How, how has, how have, what have you learned in terms of looking at it in terms of people rather than mm -hmm. kind of, rather than trying to sell, you know, to people, 
um, mm -hmm. rather than you know you know connecting instead. But tell tell us about that. Well, it's kind of how I found your you know your your Master Heart um, mm -hmm. group program really um, because I started consuming your your content, watching your videos, and thinking, oh my gosh, yeah, this guy talks a lot of sense. Um, and just to sort of, it kind of, it's kind of a, it keeps things warm, doesn't it? And there's momentum. You've got a lot of content out there yourself. So, you know, you come across it a lot, especially if you follow your page. So more and more of that, I think it sort of plants a seed in your head. And if you then think about, you know, George Cow, you think about authentic marketing. So that's the, the connection gets made in that way. And when I, I found Masterheart, basically you, you were not selling Masterheart really anywhere. You just mentioned it, that it's, it's one of the things you offer. And it was me actually asking you, tell me more about this Masterheart. What is it? And then I did, you know, like a little um, trial week. And then, you know, I joined because that was, it was the right thing for me to do. So you didn't have to sell anything, really. You just have your content out there and you've got your services out there for people to find so the right people can connect with that and with you and then it kind of sells itself i think <laughs> yeah that's what i think yeah that's so so true mm -hmm. so to, let's get into some of the things that you talk about in terms of branding and uh yeah i think that'll be really interesting for for everybody watching so mm -hmm. tell us how you Def what is branding? I mean, people have heard of it. Um, and I think probably a lot of people think branding means the logo, isn't it? The logo mm -hmm. or the graphic design of something. Yeah. And yeah. that's probably part yeah. of it, but, but yeah. you, you've thought a lot more about branding and, yeah. uh, and consistency in branding for, for, for people, including solopreneurs like us. So mm -hmm. yeah, give, give us your definition of it or your description of it. Yeah, well, I think your your brand is kind of like your business personality, really. That's how I see it. And this this, if you consider it a person, it has um, a way of speaking, and he or she or they have their own, you know, the way they dress, maybe, and the the sort of um, the physical side of it, and the way a person might dress. If your brand were a person, that could be the visual representation of your brand, like your logo, your fonts, your colors, the photography you use. Um, yeah, and then there's the tone of voice and the way your brand communicates. You know, if it were a person, you know, would you like that person? Would you connect with them? Would you resonate with them? So, um, yeah, that's kind of how I, I like to see it and, and kind of explain it. So a logo is part of a brand, but it's not the whole thing. I think a brand is really hard to define, <laughs> to be honest, and there's a lot of definitions out there. But it's kind of like the total package. I see it as the total package of someone's business, and it includes their values, their vision, you know, their ethical policy, everything really. So, yeah. Wow. So um, what have you seen to be, uh, you know, as you look at various other solopre solopreneurs, coaches, mentors, mm -hmm. healers, consultants, authors, speakers, which mm -hmm. is I think most of the folks in my audience, what do you see as like, uh, what, what, how do they need to work on their brand? Maybe you, I know it's a bit, kind of a general question, but what have you yeah. seen kind of again and again, like, oh gosh, so-and-so should do this, or mm. you know, is there a pattern of lack of understanding yeah. about branding uh, in, mm -hmm. in the solopreneur world or entrepreneur world? Yeah, yeah. I, I think there is. I think because entrepreneurs, as entrepreneurs, we kind of have to do a lot of stuff ourselves, especially in the beginning. So even before you outsource anything or subcontract or hire a VA or an accountant or anything like that, you still have to know what's involved and how it all works because that helps you, you know, to find the right person to do it for you and also to obviously have some sort of quality control over what's going on. Um, and I think tools like Canva make it really easy for people to do their own design. And I've, I mean, I haven't used it much myself because obviously I use my own software, not my own software, but you know, I use the Adobe Create Cloud software. Um, but that really is really a helpful little tool for people to get the basics in place and it helps them, you know, get sizes right. So it takes a lot of the thinking work out of it, which is really, really helpful. But also just, just because they use Canva doesn't make them designers. And, you know, some people have a real feel for it and they make really good stuff, but others not so much. And I think it's also a matter of people recognizing or, you know, being honest with yourself and thinking, okay, this is working for me or it's really not. Um, and the main 
issue that I find is that people are not really consistent with their branding, which means that they might know how to put their logo on their, you know, flow charts and worksheets and downloads and everything, but they might not be using the fonts consistently. They might not be using their colors consistently. And that's the main thing. Um, and also it's, it's how you apply it. It's kind of, it's kind of an art in itself, I find, because even um, one of my services is um, I help people with social media graphics and, you know, all the channels have their own individual sizes and specs. And it's, it can be quite a challenge to make it work for every, you know, there's no one generic image that you can use for every channel, basically. So what I do for people is I, I set every image up individually. So the Facebook pages, Facebook groups, LinkedIn profiles, Twitter, Insta, you know, everything really. Um, and that's, that can be kind of challenging because people think, oh, I really love this photograph, for example, and I want to use it throughout all my, you know, all my headers and everything like that, which is great because that brings consistency in. But then they find that it works in sort of a, you know, squarish format. But if you make it into a really thin banner, it, you know, it doesn't crop it right. And you, it takes it out of context and you don't really get anything out of it. So it's important, especially when people choose photography, that they allow for, I think it's important for stuff to be kept in the center, especially horizontally and well, for both horizontally and vertically, but especially sort of vertically, actually. So, yeah, there's just little things to think about. And, um, yeah, so that, that's the biggest thing that I see out there that people need to, you know, keep in mind, really. Because I think if you, you know, it doesn't have to be super, you know, super special or, or super clever design. I think simple is often the best. But there is a way, you know, you can, you can get it sort of right, but if you get it wrong, you can do your brand more harm than good. So it is a bit of a balance to find for people, especially if they're just starting out or they haven't got the funds yet to hire a designer. So um, yeah, just getting the basics in place is a really good idea. Yeah, so let's talk about the, the stage of someone's business where, they, um, where you would recommend they, they start thinking about brand. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say, somebody just starting out, well, let's just cut a couple of stages. Let's say one stage is they're still trying to figure out what their what their offering is going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, another stage is okay. They they've got they've got an a bit of an audience. They've got an offering they want to get out there. They want to grow that. And another stage would be, of course, much further along. They've got you know regular offerings that are working. Maybe they even have a small team, etc. Mm -hmm. So so at what stage, or or maybe there's different thought, you know, sort of mm -hmm. different considerations for each stage. But how would you yeah. talk about that? Yeah. Well, I think it's good before you even start thinking about logos and colors and things, although it can be a fun thing to do. And I noticed from, from my own point of view, I'm a very visual person. So I tend to even doodle and draw things that I don't, I might never use, but, um, it's, um, I think it's a matter of having the basics in place. Like I, I like to call them brand pillars, really. It's like who, you know, who are you first of all, and what, what are your values? What are your desires and what do you want to put out there in the world and then it's obviously your your audience who do you want to serve there's what is it you're offering um how do you do it what's your why you know get all those things in place and then you can think about how to translate that almost into a visual logo that really corresponds your you know your brand personality well um so logo colors fonts again and then the, the next step is how to implement that across all your um you know your material whether it's your your social media channels uh, your website or if it's business cards or anything else printed that you have and get that consistency throughout that so it becomes recognizable and memorable um and for all the right reasons so not in a way that people think oh dear god that is awful <laughs> you know but rather like oh yeah i've seen that and it's just it's more of a subconscious thing isn't it so it just sticks in people's heads if you use something consistently like you know your fonts and colors especially because i think people may think their logo is most important but it's it's the whole you know those three things are really core to you know the visual side of a brand yeah that's great that's that's so this is something that you love working with clients on right um I do, yeah. what you've just talked about the mm -hmm. the the sort of the, the brand pillars like uh uh you mentioned, for example, who is their audience? What do they, what, what do they stand for? These mm -hmm. are things also you enjoy kind of working through with clients. 
Well, I kind of like clients to have that in place already. So right. before they so come that, to yeah. So then you yeah. can so work they, on they that, the branding that. part of it. Yeah. Yes. And then they, they need to translate that into a visual brand. Some people already actually, a lot of my clients already have a brand or have part of a visual brand. You know, they might have a logo in place. They might be not quite sure what to do with their color palette. Um, Cause it's not just a matter of choosing a few colors. They one have to, you know, work together well. Um, and the next thing is using them well throughout all your material. Mm. Uh, so not too many, <laughs> you know, and, um, make them, make them sort of a nice, nice combination. So, um, I always like to say to people to use, um, you know, to start with a theme if they're not quite sure what to do with their color scheme, then start with a theme and make it not too generic, like, you know, seasonal colors. That's a bit generic because you might choose a bit of summer and a bit of winter and a bit of autumn and it becomes a bit of a mess. But if someone were to say, actually, I like autumn colors. So you get your lovely you know, your, your reds and browns and your yellows and oranges. And that can be quite a nice combination. So that's how I like to tell people to, you know, sort of as a, as a starting point for finding out what colors they really want to use. Um, and as for fonts, there's some good guidelines as well. So also, again, not too many different ones. Two or three is enough. Um, and just make, make sure you use them consistently like one for header fonts, uh, one for, for header titles, uh, one for body copy, and maybe one for quotes or highlights or special, you know, memes or pictures. And uh, yeah, just, just keep, just stick to it and make it consistent. So that's the main thing. Mm, that's very helpful to kind of hear those examples. So uh, anything else you want to say about your offerings as we kind of close out the mm. conversation? Um, I don't know. I think I've covered most of it here uh, okay. already. Like the, the main thing I'm focusing on is helping people with their social media graphics and website, sort mm -hmm. of bringing yeah. consistency and all those channels throughout. So that's, that's kind of what I'm really into at the moment because yeah. I see that a lot of people are, are asking me about that really. So, yeah. yeah, that's great. So if anybody watching this is seeing the power of having the consistent visual brand throughout mm -hmm. the um, different touch points that your audience has with you. Um, mm -hmm. Contact Esther and you know get a consultation and um, see how you can unify your your your, your brand so that you can uh, be mem more memorable essentially for mm -hmm. people and, yeah. and and actually come across as more professional as well. Absolutely. So, yes. Thank you, Esther. I'll be sure to put your links uh, in the notes of the video. And I just appreciate you doing this uh, call with us. Thank you for interviewing me, George. Yeah. It was great. Thanks. Thank you.